Hello, and thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Billy Newman Photo Podcast. My name's Billy Newman. I'm a photographer based in the Northwest, and I try and shoot a lot of landscape images. I'm um, also working on a lot of commercial photography and product photography stuff. I'm trying to build my career in the arts, and you're listening to my podcast. It's on my website. It's on iTunes. It's on a few other places that maybe you can find it if you Googled it, something about my name or something about the title, but who knows what that's going to be. Today, I'm talking about a uh, cool photo. Photo that I photographed in the Imnaha River Canyon out in Eastern Oregon, and uh, it's a one that I, I think I was talking about the other day on the podcast. But just went up on Instagram. That's at Billy Newman, and it's a black and white conversion of a raw file that I shot out in Eastern Oregon in the river or the Imnaha River Canyon, which is uh, just over from the Hell's Canyon River area, and. It's really beautiful over there. It's really uh, one of my favorite spots. Uh, that and the Wallowa Mountains, uh, Hell's Canyon. It really seems like that northeast corner of Oregon and probably into Idaho has a lot of cool landscape stuff that I've always been uh, been pretty fond of, pretty interested in that kind of terrain and landscape. And so I love getting out there and I love getting to the back country or out on the Forest Service roads a little further away from the heavier population areas. Uh, like, you know, the the tripod holes that are left over at all the national parks. If you've uh, if you've ever done the national parks tour, you kind of know what I mean. But uh, a lot of the the kind of on rails locations within the national parks have a lot of people out it, a lot of visitors, and and with that you kind of get a lot of duplication of the same sort of creative style or or, um, or creative opportunities. You know, you get everybody looking at half done from the same spot at the creek in Yosemite or or whatever other location it might be that you could consider as a uh, as sort of a not overused because they're still beautiful and interesting and each person should get the opportunity to go there and photograph them or you know make something of them for themselves and, and of themselves but uh, it's difficult to sort of find that original take or the original angle it's it's kind of material that's sort of been over before and uh, and in that you sort of have to get a little bit more adventurous when you're trying to be creative and you have to you have to find some new pieces to kind of put together or culminate into something that's as special or as, as interesting to look and um, yeah, so uh, trying to work on some of the distribution around uh, some of that that artwork stuff, but uh, but yeah, still processing through a lot of the photos from the September trip that we did through a bunch of Eastern Oregon, and, and that's all been really really great. I've been happy to to be able to get out and uh, and try and get a bunch of photographs handled, but uh, but yeah, I'm trying to look around through Lightroom, and I've been putting a lot of work in editing a lot of the, the photos in the library from the last month or so. But this image from Imnaha, it's got a lot of detail and contour in it from the erosion pattern that's happened uh, from the way that the waters eroded the Imnaha River Canyon out of what was probably a more flat surfaced area uh, originally, you know, a long time ago. And uh, it's really interesting to kind of look at the water erosion patterns as you move around and travel across Oregon, but there's a lot of really amazing features that you get to see. Um, So that's kind of part of why I tried to pull this into a black and white photo. Uh, to try and focus the eye a little bit more on some of the details and contours of the line in it instead of the saturation and, and kind of draw and pull of the color. I remember learning about that kind of early on when I was getting into photography, when I was uh, going through and I was reading a bunch of books about uh, about photography and color theory and design and um, and like composition, all those sorts of things, they really come together. And it's such a like a practiced art form that it's really nothing you read and then understand absolutely. It's really you read it. And then you spend a lifetime kind of learning about it so you get closer to the practice of it of it coming in properly and uh, that's always been uh, something that's just just an interesting piece of being a human or being conscious and sort of how your knowledge about a topic develops over time but um, just even in that of understanding color theory and composition it's so much more advanced for myself than it was years and years ago and there's so many other people that are such such further along or so much further along down this road of understanding and and sort of competently being a good athlete if you could kind of think of it in that sense of just being able to perform and like show up and perform and get something really amazing and and beautiful and they're just able to understand how to put different pieces together in ways that are more visually interesting so it's uh it's an amazing talent and a a really amazing refined skill that's it's practice and take you know it just takes a lifetime to get good at it it's sort of like practicing medicine or what is it like the application of uh, practical sciences is the practice of them it's not really the execution of them it's not uh, like science or, uh, it's a different topic but uh, it's interesting how you know you kind of see some of those similarities where you find out about something that that is absolute but then you just have to practice its implementation and uh, especially in art or in creative fields you really see that uh, that kind of come up a lot where uh, no one no person's creativity or there's no perfect form of creativity as a truth 
And so a lot of people have to find all of these different avenues to try and approach it or to, to try and demonstrate, you know, something creative. And really with creativity, you, you have to do something new or something novel all the time. It's not that you can reproduce or, or pathologically go down that same route that had existed before and derive as much value from it. It's especially true in comedy and music and, and a handful of things. It seems like uh, it seems like just the idea can get burned out. It's kind of strange how it can be, so that's why you have to kind of keep pursuing novel things and, and keep pursuing something better or, you know, something more. Um, but as little old me here in Oregon, I'm just trying to pursue something pretty and something interesting while I, uh, I learn about the art of photography and learn about the business of it. Oh, hey, I put so much effort and time into trying to figure out how to, how to put together an act, you might say, or how to put together a portfolio, what is good art, what is... Uh, photography I don't even know if I got that heavy into it but just what is interesting to me what what stirs me up and um, and so yeah I'm currently trying to focus and double down on the business side of that now that I've developed uh, at least a little bit of a backbone in the art side of it and I've been trying to pay my dues for the past couple years of uh, I don't know if they're hell gigs you know you, you talk to, to successful people sometimes that are a little older and, and you know a little bit more developed in, in whatever their career is and they talk about the early days of you know how it wasn't always that way I don't know if I really have hell stories like that you know of, uh, of really terrible gigs or anything I've really always been quite fortunate in the type of work I got to do but definitely entry level <laughs> definitely entry level for a long time um, so lots of stuff lots of clients that uh, aren't quite everything you would always want and that's sort of I guess how it goes at the beginning but, uh, but yeah still kind of pursuing and trying to learn and uh, I don't know, trying to, to get like a valid amount of experience before I really have to put that forth and before I really start charging for it, by the way, too. So, I don't know, just kind of working every day and uh, trying to put together photos, videos, uh, trying to, oh man, distribution. That's a big one. Got to figure out the distribution of some of these. I'm working on great stuff, but I really need to work on how many people get to see all this great stuff. And uh, yeah, that's something that, that's always kind of keen in my mind. So, I don't know. Uh, if you want to help my distribution, you can go to Instagram and check out uh, at Billy Newman to see this photograph I just put up of the Im Imnaha River Canyon in eastern Oregon. Uh, really beautiful spot out there. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a cool area, that vantage point. It, it just kind of it shows like sort of an angle, like a catty corner angle up the Imnaha River Canyon as you see the draw of the erosion of, of uh, the way that the water's pulled from the top of the mountain down to the, the riverbed. And uh, it's just really interesting to see all those contours right as the sun's coming up. So you see a lot of uh, detailing shadows and stuff in the landscape. But um, yeah, fun times over there. Man, that was a busy trip all over Oregon during that. So if you want to check out more, go to BillyNewmanPhoto.com, at Billy Newman on Instagram. Again, thanks a lot for listening to this episode of the Billy Newman Photo Podcast.